Hamilton's Rock Station, Y108. There's April Wine and Enough is Enough. The Chili's Can't Stop. It is 435. I'm Daryl. Joined in studio by Tyler, Dave, Dean, and Joey. Theory of a Dead Man in the Hammer. How's it going? Yes. It's going great. Hey, you know what, guys? Who do you think's the most fun band in Canadian history? This is... Uh, no, it wasn't in history. It was in in the past year. Like, currently, the most fun band in Canada. Pathetic. Wow. Just, just recently. So what do you think? Uh, yeah, that's in the last... Year, what do you think? I'm gonna say April Wine. Ooh. Nope. Um, I'm gonna go with uh, guess who? Max Webster. <laughs> it actually is April Wine. <laughs> hey, You're right. Oh, Tyler. Wow. Nails Tyler it. wins. Yeah, he's coming up with his own questions though. Yeah. I smell. Uh, uh, yeah. Maybe he knew the answer. No, I, I just. I mean, I knew the answer. Obviously, came into practice his golf swing today and uh, talked a little Canadian rock trivia. Turns out he's better a uh, uh, golfer as a left-handed golfer than he is. It was natural, right-handed. I, women say I'm better with my left hand. <laughs> <laughs> the new album, The Truth Is, comes out today. Uh, low Life, already a big hit. Congratulations. Must be uh, satisfying to be uh, at the point of release day and ready to go hit the road again. We're just happy we're here in your studio. That's what we said. We go, no matter when our record comes out, we want to be in the Y108 studio. It is a, a pretty awesome. sweet studio. The the, the purple... Uh, Carpeting on the roof and, mm-hmm. and purple desktop. It's a very stylish locale just to kind of hang out. I like it. I, it's still, the carpeting on the roof is somehow really gross and dirty. Somehow. <laughs> I don't know how it's footprints on it. <laughs> What's going on here? Um, it, now, uh, with success of Scars and Souvenirs and, and the first two records, uh, having just released The Truth Is, does it put more pressure on you to, to follow up a record like that? I would say so. Yeah. Uh, this last record especially, I think... Uh, our label uh, put a lot of pressure on us. We put pressure on ourselves because it's with the success we have, you want to keep trying to go upwards. Yeah, of so, course. So uh, not not become content with the success and start writing these odd, crazy Self records. Self indulgent. Yeah, that no one likes except the band or the band's mom. Do you guys <laughs> have those discussions in the studio? Like, is this? Do you hash songs out? Um, in a group like that, or do you just kind of write and go record? Yeah, we jam. We uh, we get together and just jam songs like we did, you know, back in 2001. Just get in a room, you know, drink a ton of beer. Tyler shotgunning beers the whole time. TNT? Yeah, TNTs. Is that where the inspiration for Low Life came from? Yeah, exactly. Pretty much. Kind of yeah. looked in the mirror a bit. <laughs> <laughs> now the character in the video is, is this is it a fictional character is this like a buddy you guys grew up with everybody knows someone <laughs> like that right At yeah in the video person. yeah that's Donald Logue the actor uh, he was in a TV show called Grounded for Life Tower of Steve uh, he's been in tons of movies uh, we don't know how he even got out the, the director was friends with his so uh, when we found out he wanted to do the video we were like sweet so go check him out his name is Donald not Donald but Donald. spelled like Donald without the D, is that yeah, right? Yeah, Donald Logue. Yeah, he's in tons of stuff. Uh, so it was great. He's probably the most famous guy we've had in a It's funny, we've shot like 15 videos, but uh, I think he's the first actual actor we've worked with. Because right. it was interesting to see like how somebody that actually knows what they're doing carries themselves on a, on like a set, whereas, you know, in the past actors that we've had in our videos not to slight them or anything but you know they're oh you are they're, too. <laughs> they're, they're music video actors as opposed to actual right. trained actors you know so he was uh, he was able to carry the scenes on his own it was pretty funny well you guys are recording in LA now that's what happens right you get the bi- you get the real actor not the music video that's actor. right yeah. that's right we get uh, and a lot of the hookers we have in the studio are, are <laughs> the real like deal top notch now the real deal top notch because usually a lot of them were actors and said forget it we're just going to become prostitutes now hang out at <laughs> Recording studios. That's fun. Um, you're Tyler. You're living in LA now. Is there are, are the rest of the band living in LA or just you? Uh, just me. Joe, our drummer over here, he doesn't have a microphone. We don't let him talk. But Wait, why, uh, why do the drummers never get the microphones? <laughs> he, you guys he, never ask him any questions. <laughs> that and drummers don't have the intellect to really <laughs> answer <laughs> questions. Joe, you have to defend yourself. Yeah, you, you can't. can't, let, <laughs> you, can't you can't make fun no of Joe it's unless uh, Joe, she, now you're unless just proving the rebuttal. stereotype true. Yeah, yeah. get back in your cage. <laughs> All right. Well, so we can't hear this intel- intelligent he's, banter because you got no mic. He said stereotypes are there for a reason because they're true. Now, yesterday, did you? I, yesterday was Drummer Appreciation Day. Did your band appreciate oh. you? We missed that one on the calendar. <laughs> I knew it was there. I just decided not to point it out. I knew Joe wouldn't know about it. 
She was drummer. Anyway, before. Joe lives in Vegas, so he's uh, he's south of the border. Me and Dean, we still live in Vancouver. Yeah. And uh, when you guys uh, get together, you all go down to L.A. Spend, where do you record? Yeah, we recorded our last three records at the same studio, actually. All of them in, in uh, what's that, the Valley? Valley Village. Yeah, it's pretty much like uh, North Hollywood. Uh, it's in the Valley. It's hot. It's hot. It's hot. We, yeah. play, uh, we play hockey in the parking lot of the studio, and it's pretty hot. Yeah, it would be. It'd be like playing it. Well, it's, it's got to be like L.A. out there today. Yeah, it's much. pretty hot out there today. Yeah, I bet. Yeah, similar. Now, uh, albums. Do you do you feel that albums are important now, as as singles are the way that music is consumed and, and bought and sold? Uh, well, we from the beginning actually, we've, uh, nothing's changed for us. We always try to write a record that is full of singles, uh, and now, ironically, that's just kind of how the industry has become. Where it hasn't really changed much in Europe, like UK. It's been always about singles, and it's just kind of North America's kind of uh, switched over. But for us, our thinking's always been the same. Our last record had eight singles off it, and people say, that's so amazing. It is amazing, but... It uh, is. We just kind of write every song to try to be three and a half minutes and, and not really go off and have like an eight-minute song because as cool as that is, it just doesn't seem to, as right now, make uh, have any purpose anymore. It seems that people are looking to download singles, so... Plus, you know, you can do all that eight-minute-long stuff live like if you want right. to extend a four minute song and play it for eight minutes live you can do that is that fun to do that when you've got a song that it's you know like a big hit like something like a uh, bad girlfriend or whatever uh to to jam it out and to to change it up to lengthen it in the live show yes, that sir. song we don't that people pretty much just want to hear that <laughs> don't, like, don't screw is. with my song yeah, yeah. yeah. But certain songs yeah now, um, you guys were also part of uh, the past two Transformers movies. How did it come about to get song in the soundtrack? Well, Dave was banging the chick in the first one. <laughs> Megan, yeah, Megan Fox. Megan she's a hoe. Fox. She was really, <laughs> it's she over. Was it's over it's between over. us. You were getting Shia LaBeouf sloppy seconds. He just claimed in details that he <laughs> yeah. had sex with Megan Fox during Transformers. Oh, really? Yeah. Did that's he really? Why we, that's he why did. we, that's that's why we broke uh, up. Yeah, and so now I'm actually banging the chick in the new one. <laughs> <laughs> It's so a great way to get your song tell, on the soundtrack. Yeah, don't tell Jason, Jason Statham. They, what's his name again? <laughs> yeah, I think Statham. you're right. It's a hard thing to pronounce. He, he yeah, looks yeah, mean, Statham, too. Supposedly. He looks yeah. like he could headbutt your face inside he's out. He's going to headbutt my face when he comes <laughs> up. It's, he's made a career out of hurting people. That's what yeah. he does. Uh, you guys just played Sarnia Bay Fest, and you're gearing up for the Carnival of Madness summer tour, uh, which starts August the 13th, and you're going to be in... Uh, Ottawa for Blues Fest. So there's a, a couple shows coming off or er, coming up, and then uh, a couple of weeks of downtime. You guys do a little vacationing in between the tours. Yeah, just spend some time at home and basically say our last goodbyes before the touring schedule really kicks in, and we never see our friends and family ever again. Now the the tour schedule it takes you through Carnival of Madness goes all through the states. There's no ca there's no Canadian shows. Yeah, no, there isn't on this one. And then I think you guys go to Europe in the fall and kind of round out mm -hmm. the season there, right? Yeah. We'll be in the States until November, and then uh, the UK, end of November and December. So we're talking next year for Canada. We don't, we haven't set anything up yet, but uh, we definitely want to put some kind of a tour together. Adrian would, will probably want us to play Hamilton on Christmas morning, which I'm cool with. Yeah, I don't have any plans. We'll probably have to be working, so you know, yeah. I mean, we yeah, can exactly. come in and do this again on Christmas. Sure, I've got no plans. Right, I'll sure. be around. Um, um, so when do you the you would think a, a big Canadian band like yourselves the release of an album there would be a full scale Canadian tour? What happened there? Do we yell at the record guy standing in the back? Yeah, of the there's, he's mostly to blame. <laughs> but, record uh, labels to blame. You guys are to blame, <laughs> not the band uh, or the fans. I don't know. It seems like we're, our focus always, for some reason, is uh, in the States. I think that has to do with uh, American management, maybe, and uh, them always pushing us there. I think that, uh, you know, Canada is always a top priority for us. It just has to work out timing-wise and, and uh, as far as how many shows you can play and where to go. Yeah, we, have, we are uh, fortunately lucky enough to have the ability to say quality over quantity when it comes to turning touring certain places we we tour the states a lot but there's so many cities to play you could tour there for six months and not hit the same city but in canada you know you got about two three weeks and you can go east to west uh so for us we were we really want to make sure we have a great package and have a, some cool bands go with us and put on great shows in every city and not just kind of 
drop drop in to say hi and play a couple shows here. And there. Yeah, what always ends up happening is they just add like a date here or there onto the tour that we're on, so it's yeah. like you just jump up and play and one local show. Local bands and opening for us, and we're like, yeah, it would be nice to put on like a a real tour with like four bands or something. Yeah, and, you know, have a name of it and stuff like that. So, and there's really only in Canada a handful of bands that really crack through and make it into the states and and, and make a name for themselves south of the border. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's tough to do. Yeah, it's you know for us it's. Uh, uh, like I said before, it's, uh, we're lucky because uh, things are working in Europe and stuff too, so we're going to go over there more often. Last time we only went twice, so this time hopefully we can go, you know, many times. Yeah, it's nice to have options. It keeps it fresh. You don't end up uh, saturating any one market either. So and You don't see the same groupies tour after yeah. tour. Yeah, well, we still do. <laughs> they travel. <laughs> you have a convoy that comes along yeah, with you? Yeah, they, they follow us around. You get the ho train, the theory of a dead man ho train. Yeah, yeah we like choo them. Choo choo. <laughs> <laughs> well, once again, congratulations on the success of the new album, The Truth Is, and, and Low Life, which is a huge hit in Canada. I'm sure it will be uh, the same in the States. Uh, good luck with the Carnival of Madness tour. Thank you. Um, who else on the bill? I know Alter Bridge and uh, Blackstone Cherry. Adelita's Way. And a band called Emphatic. There you go, so five, five, band, five yeah. bands. Beautiful. Thanks for stopping by. I appreciate it today. Our pleasure. Thank you. All right, here's Low Life, Theory of a Dead Man. The album's out today. It's called The Truth Is. Go by. Hamilton's Rock Station, Y108.